A lot of people can uh, make these uh, cells and they can try different chemistries and they can just put it all together and just uh, kind of press it to this. Uh, and uh, we have this device here called Macor. It has 100 channels and we can connect two batteries for our demo and just to kind of uh, show how we can charge and discharge them. So I'll just plug them in here. We have four of these are channels, we'll just use first two channels for today and uh, uh, we, will, we will connect uh, this thing. So now it's connected, I can use software on the other side to enable So what are the two different parts? There's the battery and then there's the cell? Yeah, this is just different types of batteries. Two usually, different types of batteries. Usually people start experiments from the smaller kind and then they roll and do like bigger ones. It's just different uh, okay. uh, type of uh, experiments. But you can connect more than uh, like a few channels to each battery. If you have like a big battery and you want to charge and discharge it faster, you can connect like five or ten channels to one battery. So it's much, much more work. It seems a little bit humble, but the one on the, the, one on the right is, of course, like coin cell, button cell, but we're on the left, that's a 1650 cell. It's not that big, but that's what most battery packs do. Apple Parker Tesla, well, Tesla's, it's got thousands of those. That's, your, that's, that's the most common lithium rechargeable cell in the world. Really? So if you can battery pack uh, under the hood, it has yeah. 36,000 of these. Each button mounted button. somehow in there, yeah, and it's all in electrolyte and it's just and they just put a big box around it. Is, that your is there a technological limit as to why they can't create larger sort of batteries? A connection of manufacturing, also, I mean, it, 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 it all factors in just manufacturing scale, they can do pretty well there. Also, yield, the battery's still not a super high yield process, so you make a lot of smaller ones, two percent of them don't work, that's okay. Um, you just throw those two cells away. But um, you know, in a bigger cell, you're kind of heavily invested in that. If that cell fails to spec, you just lost a lot of time. So it's partly that. And also, I think the services of the industry grew from actually small stuff, really. The batteries were originally made for this consumer you know, portable electronics. And so here now, I'm trying to select these batteries that I just uh, connected to the device. And uh, I'm selecting those channel, and I have uh, some procedure I want to use, it will charge battery for one minute, then it will discharge it for one, for another minute, and then it will do it a couple times and stuff. The start is uh, here, and you see it's already active. Same I will do with uh, third channel, this is uh, like bigger battery, and uh, I will also start another test on it. But what exactly are you measuring? So right now we are going to just charge and discharge it to specific voltage and specific current and uh, we are trying to understand uh, you know, how, how long this battery is going to so last. So you are scheduling something right now? Yeah. And this will just On start this somewhere. machine to do a certain thing, yeah, a test yeah. scenario. And here we have uh, another application that is built by Enersoft and it's connected to our cable uh, to this network, uh, to router and this device. And, uh, so this is the machine's thing, and yeah. this is your software. Yeah, this is my laptop, and I have my app running on it. This app, we have two different kinds of apps. One is desktop application on your Windows, another is web application. For desktop, I can just select some of these files, and I can quickly plot and do like small analysis on this, and uh, it will show me all this data in a nice way where I can see each cycle and uh, you know what's the current uh, capacity and voltage on them. So when batteries start uh, discharging, it will decrease capacity. So you can see it started here and finished here. And this is our kind of desktop version. But the idea of the desktop is to pull up data from this hardware and to submit it to the cloud. So we can actually get these files uh, from the device itself and uh, we can just see that uh, you know, files are uh, coming up and uh, I'll just put them here for this folder. Uh, so this is essentially folders that we are looking for with this app that is running. And these files are picking up by the app and it will upload them. You see, like most of them are like 10 megabytes and it's uploading them to the cloud. So they disappear in right now in the real time. 
And now if I go to the browser, I can actually see that uh, it will pick them up in the cloud. So these are the same files that just uh, pulled up from the hardware and they upload into the cloud. It will take a few minutes to do processing, but it's all in real time. So you can see last update was 433, so we're still processing them. When it's done, I will have real data from this battery running on this cycle and it will be possible to do analytics about this so we can do like predictive stuff to understand uh, if you have any problem with this battery because if something is uh, going wrong then you can send alert you can notify people like hey your temperature is going too high or something like that uh, usually we have users in this platform who subscribe to these notifications so which each uh, admin can assign specific channels to each person and like, hey, I'm responsible for channel from 1 to 8 or 8 to 16. And if you have any problem with that, we will send you an SMS message or email. And so when so you don't basically have to hover all day watching. Yeah, so essentially, like you can see one file is already done. So I can quickly look up at the data and uh, it will show me how it's charging and discharging. But because I've like pre-selected some files, uh, you can see a little bit more of charges and discharges here when it loads. So these are just standard charges and discharges of each battery. You can have voltage against days, and this is like pre-selected battery. And uh, uh, you also can do like other analysis on current and uh, capacity, resistance, uh, temperature, all kinds of uh, differential capacity plots and things like that. Managing the test data on batteries is probably the most complex of anything we do because there's so much data there. In every single cell, you get a thousand cycle tests or something like that, and you see every one of those tests has there's curvatures and special parts of each one of those curves that can be important. But to sift through all that data is a huge. So if you start in Excel, you have a long way to go before you can really see yeah, much. You had to do, your... Yeah, you had to hack that through. You were talking about uh, the Tesla, for example. There are how many batteries? In there? Uh, oh, no. Thirty-six thousand. How many? Thirty-six thousand okay. in one part. So thirty-six thousand. So let's say they're they're building, you know, a hundred cars during the day, right? Um, how would they use this test? Do they work in batches? Where, for example, a battery manufacturer delivers a pallet full of batteries, and then what they do? They sample maybe three of them. To, to then be an indicator as to how the whole batch is working out, or, or what would be the process? Yeah, they would, they would do some sampling for sure. Sampling, okay. And it's uh, usually done by Panasonic. They have a special department in Tesla Giga Factory for Panasonic. It's all closed from Tesla. Because Panasonic is, is the battery maker. Yeah. They, so they, they actually have their on site as well. Yeah. They, they are inside, they, they, they take 20% of Giga Factory on Tesla facilities, and it's all for battery development and uh, manufacturing testing. And they have closed doors. Tesla people cannot see what they are doing. But what they do, they probably do sample of from one to three percent of these batteries, and they like compare, like, hey, I have this like cell batteries. Which one is performing better, like this one or this one? Why they are so different? Because on day three, I will have like different curves and different uh, data inside these batteries. So, so they would be doing the same thing that we do have here. Yeah. So we will connect all these uh, batteries that they took as a sample, and they will charge and discharge them and then they will understand this data, analyze it. If they find some anomalies, they will just, uh, like remove these batteries from pipeline. But uh, more importantly, they want to have some pipeline where it's done automatically. So they need to have a way to measure things in, in real time. And uh, if pipeline is going like, hey, this is good batteries, they want to have some other pipeline where their batteries. So what they're mainly doing is verifying that the standards that they promised Tesla are being adhered to, right? But you go beyond that, right? You were talking about there are so many different ways, so many different characteristics of the battery, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so every customer will have a, a different request in terms of right. what characteristics like they want to measure. Some are manufacturing them, so they want R&D kind of data. Others are using an OEM thing, so they're trying to make a decision. They're making a quick qualification data. Other, other people are doing like long-term product testing. Other people are doing batch testing. 
other people. And so there are just these different scenarios for analytics, right? Yeah. And the problem in the industry right now is that this all files, like while we were talking, we connect, collect a bunch of data, like these are just files coming up from uh, channels. And, uh, it's like gigabytes every day and people put it in Excel and they just have to manually go and plot these things and then they do some MATLAB or Python script and they do it for this batch, like for 10 or 100 of them, but they don't do it for thousands or they don't do it for real time every day. They just take this one sample do it once in a month and it's, it's all. So, I mean, you, you were talking about, I forgot again what the number was, it's a very large number of... 36,000. No, that was the number of batteries, but in terms of the characteristics that you can measure on a battery, what would you say? Well... More than 100? Yeah. Easily. And, 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 you have, and you have it over time, you need to repeat over. So how much, how much of that information do you actually use? How do you kind of summarize that information into like single or simple metrics or graphical metrics that yeah. allow you to make decisions quickly as opposed to having to like go in. But all another data. thing is all this uh, question you're asking is about metadata so people can collect like what's the current C rate, what's the number of cycles, what's the chemistry, what's the testing procedure they use, what's the mass. Uh, they have uh, all kinds of uh, commentary stuff they can put. C rate, uh, C rate is like the way how battery is charging, it was the speed of charging because you may want to charge it faster or slower. And our system can do this type of filtering uh, for you. So if you want to look for some specific batteries, I just type something and I can easily find them online and in a few button clicks I can go and just analyze this data and uh, see like what's the difference between these batteries and things like that. Well, what, where I was going with that was, uh, as you look into the future, you see a world where it's pretty much the same as today. In other words, there will always be the need for a lot of testing, a lot of, for a lot of variables. Or do we, are, are we going to learn from what we're learning today and start to maybe standardize a lot of this battery technology, particularly as, as EV grows, right? Yeah, the goalposts are always moving, though. So, one, there's new battery chemistry. People, everyone wants to charge faster. Everyone wants to just charge longer, have their you know, phone or, or watch or, or car have longer range. And so there's a bit, even within lithium-ion chemistry as we see today, they're always changing cathodes and things to try to tweak a little more. And so that's, that's going to feel that. But now there's also many other new battery chemistries, next-generation chemistries. Like for aviation, with the lithium sulfur, and they have a whole different set. Lithium of, sulfur, you say? Yeah, yeah. And like they have a whole different. That's one of them. They're, they're one of ten. But it's always lithium. Uh, a lot of times it's lithium because lithium is the lightest metals, and so if you're looking for gravimetric energy density, like how much energy per unit weight, uh, which is important for cars when you accelerate a car, uh, uh, or aviation when you get off the ground. So those are important numbers. Lithium is always up there because it's the lightest metal for the anode. But it also happens to be highly reactive and has a big voltage. So that, you know, a lithium cell is 3.7 volts or something. Uh, you know, your old Duracell zinc manganese is 1.5 volts. So lithium has also got a nice high voltage, but that will make it fly. So another challenge is that all this uh, that David was talking about is different uh, reaction inside the battery, so it's unpredictable. You cannot. I mean, it's predictable if you have a lot of those, but if you have like few batteries, as you can see here, I just selected three random batteries, and they all behave very differently. If you zoom at the data, uh, you know, it's like each battery is very different from each other, and it's like different by far from 2.9 to 3.9, which can damage your car if you have not enough. 2.9 or 3.9 volts. Volts. Yeah. So. And it's just like example, very simple, same battery, like you just pick it uh, like from the shelf and it may have different numbers and it's actually bad thing. You should, it should be consistent, more, more consistent than, than this. And uh, what people really care about is accuracy of the data and uh, different types of uh, algorithms that can massage the data in such a way that we can analyze any chemistry, any um, you know, new type of batteries with new electrolyte, with new type of anodes and cathodes in, in universal way. This is very difficult problem. This is why it's hard to build this type of model. So Enersoft is focusing mostly on this type of problems. We are not trying to focus on one battery. We're trying to build generic models for all of them. And this is why it's taking longer time to train these models. And it takes a lot of data to make them actually accurate and uh, 
interesting to use. 